Hi, this is Charlie. I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to connect FileMaker Pro 12 to Excel via ODBC. And the first thing we need to do is make sure we install our ODBC drivers from our FileMaker Pro 12 CD or from the disk image that you downloaded from the software, you know, when you bought it online or something. So open up that original FileMaker Pro installer disk and install the ODBC client driver. So it's just a little installer package. Run that package and it will install the driver so that we can connect Excel to FileMaker. And again, that's not done by default with the default FileMaker 12 install. Okay, so you have to do it manually. Now there's another tool I want you to know about. Actual Technologies makes this thing called the Actual ODBC Pack, which in, um, installs a bunch of other drivers for connecting uh, Excel to other SQL databases or FileMaker to other SQL databases like Oracle, MySQL, uh, SQL Server, that type of thing. Uh, you don't need this, but it did install a pretty cool tool that I like. And it's in your Applications folder. Uh, it'll be uh, If you run the installer for Actual Technologies ODBC pack, in your Utilities folder, it installs this thing called the ODBC Manager. And um, I found... In, um, when I was messing around with FileMaker driver in the beginning and connecting it to Excel and creating um, ODBC instances, that somehow I corrupted something and it made Excel crash. Okay, so this ODBC manager from Actual Technologies, when I installed this and opened it up, it discovered the problem and fixed it. So this is a pretty cool utility and it kind of saved my ass, to be honest. So I want you to know that it exists and, uh, and it was handy for me. It might be handy for you. Okay. Now what this ODBC manager does is it um, manages system data sources, data source names. Okay. And you can add and remove data source names. And data sources are just uh, instances of files that you've got open that you want to access through ODBC. And you can add them or remove them. Okay, and that's what this ODBC manager does. Okay, so we're going to start from the beginning as if we've never um, opened Excel into FileMaker before. But we did install already the FileMaker stock ODBC driver. Okay, got it? Okay, so now what we want to do is actually open a database that we can view. And I'll open up the legacy database in FileMaker 12 so that we can see it and we can watch how it runs. Now the one thing that we have to do when we open a FileMaker 12 file is we have to set the sharing on for that file for ODBC specifically. Okay, so uh, it's actually um, an item under the file menu. So we've got the file open now. This is our legacy database. We go under File menu and choose Sharing, and you see that it has an instance here for ODBC and JDBC. So we click that to open it, and it'll give you a list of all the currently open files. You select the one that you want to share, and then you make sure that ODBC and JDBC is set to On. And I've got it set for all users, but you can make it password privilege set specific if you want. Okay, so just make sure that's all set like that, and then we're good to go. So now we have access to all the database tables that are in this database from Excel. So let's go ahead and check it. I'll open up Excel now. And I'm running Excel 2011 for Mac. And it has um, a built-in query tool, the Microsoft Query Tool, that will now uh, be used to query this FileMaker file. So we're just going to do it into a, a brand new t uh, Excel workbook. But you could have a highly stylized Excel spreadsheet already made if you wanted to. And you could use this same process to query the FileMaker file and fill a fancy spreadsheet as well. But we'll just use a blank one for now. So we open up our file. We've got this blank data file. And what we'll do is we'll go under the data pull down menu, we choose get external data. And then we'll say new database query. Okay? And this will open up the Microsoft Query tool. The first thing it does is it says choose a data source. 
okay? And this will be blank the first time, so we'll want to add a data source. And the data source is the FileMaker data table that we have opened before, that other FileMaker file. So it'll give you this Choose an ODBC Driver menu, and you'll probably only see FileMaker ODBC in here. But these are all the drivers that actual installed from the actual ODBC pack as well, okay? So click FileMaker ODBC. We can ignore the actuals for now. And after we click that, it will it'll walk us through naming it, all right, and configuring it. So it's a FileMaker DSN configuration for this data source. We'll name it Legacy. And the description can be whatever you want. It could be the same thing, or you could be more verbose if you want. And it'll say, where is the data? Where's the host that you want to um, link to? So you could put in an IP address for your FileMaker server here, or you can just do local host for the local computer. I'm going to do it on the local computer for now. We'll click OK, and it'll. I click to check that so that it would show me a list of the databases that are open. Again, we only have one database open, so it automatically selected it for us, but we could have selected from a list there. We'll click continue and it says, okay, it's done. You've configured your, your new ODBC data source and here's the configuration and then you see it in your list, okay? So now we just click it because we can have a whole bunch of these uh, over time for multiple databases on multiple servers, for example. And we say, okay, that's the one we want to hit and let's click OK. And here is where you need to enter your actual FileMaker login, your user ID and password. Now this database doesn't have a master user ID or password set up or any other privilege set set up, but you still have to enter in the user ID admin with a capital A and then no password at all and click OK and then this will open up the query tool, the Microsoft query tool, so that we can actually start querying the FileMaker database directly. Okay, so up here in the right, you'll see all the tables that are available in that FileMaker database. So let's just scroll down and pick projects, and you pick any one of the tables and click add table. And then it will add it into this section over here on the left. And we can start to query any of the fields now in that table. So we can say we'll put project ID in there, we'll put project name in there, and it just starts to add new columns as you go along. Okay, so let's say uh, use of funds year one, use of funds year two, and you can add as many of these as you want, and it'll just keep scrolling to the right. Okay, so you might have to scroll over in order to keep adding columns, but you can add as many as your heart desires, and you can also add them from multiple tables. So if we add in more tables from above, we can put them in here, and we can link them together, uh, like project ID to project ID in, the, in a secondary table, and you can do um, very robust data sets uh, of, you know, in any configuration, and you build the joins between the tables right here in this query tool. Okay, so now let's go back to the beginning here, far left, and you see I've got the project ID. All of these are empty. So this criteria tape, um, field here is, is where we set the criteria on what we want to return. So if we just do a return and test it for uh, when they're all empty, it will return all the data in the database. Okay, all the, all the records in the database. So now we can see how we can return smaller sets of data. So for example, let's say I just want to have project uh, the record for project ID number 5. If I put 5 in here and then hit test again, you'll see that it'll grab only record 5. If I want to find all the records larger than 5, I could do that and hit test again and it will give me all the records that have a project ID larger than 5. See the difference? So now let's just say I want to do just five. I'll hit test again just to see if that's the right data. And then I can say, I say yes it is, so I hit return data. And then now we'll populate this Excel spreadsheet with the data. And it'll ask you, where do you want to place it? Should we start with row one, cell one? Or do you want to put it somewhere else? Do you want to put it in a new sheet or a pivot table, etc.? So you've got lots of options there. You can put it in a fancy database if you want. You can put it in any column. 
any row and it'll fill in the data from the FileMaker file directly into the Excel spreadsheet dynamically. Now here's the cool part. That query was saved into this spreadsheet. So if we save this spreadsheet, it actually saves the query. So let's say we'll call this legacy Excel file and I'll save it to my desktop. And I can close it now and reopen it. And you'll see that the data will be in there. There's a warning about a uh, security warning about resetting your data connections, but uh, it doesn't seem to stop anything. So you'll see the data is in here, but more importantly, if we go back to data, get external data, we can actually edit this query. I think we might have to sit on a, yeah, we have to actually click on one of the cells from the query. And then we can edit the query itself and it'll bring up that whole Microsoft query that we had before in the query tool and allow us again to modify it. So we can go back in and say, okay, now I want it to be all the records in the, in the database, or I want it to be only the first record, or I want it to be the fourth record, or I want it to be all the records greater than five. Uh, I think my system's getting a little slow because of the, of the recording. So again, if I say now, I want this to be greater than five, I can test it again. It gives me all the records that are greater than five. I can hit return data, and that will now populate the same spreadsheet with all the additional rows. Cool? Well, that's basically the entire setup that's our entire process, showing us how to connect Excel to FileMaker and do queries in Excel to FileMaker 12 using the FileMaker 12 built-in ODBC driver. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me any anytime. I hope this helped, and uh, talk to you soon.